talking points. A focus on the political scene in Lubbock and across the South Plains. Welcome back. Here's a look at some of the political headlines of the past week. A hearing Friday dealing with the Planned Parenthood lawsuit against the city of Lubbock. Lubbock's attorneys have asked that the lawsuit be dismissed because Planned Parenthood had no basis to actually sue the city because the city isn't enforcing the law banning abortions here. Planned Parenthood attorneys argue the suit puts the business at greater risk of private lawsuits. No ruling from the judge, but he has reportedly asked the Texas Solicitor General if the Lubbock law should be voided for violating state law. A couple of spending measures approved by the Lubbock City Council this week. First, the construction plans for the new downtown police headquarters. Chief Floyd Mitchell tweeting this picture and saying, I can't thank citizens of Lubbock enough for their continued support of law enforcement officers. That was expected. This was not. The council setting aside $1.75 million to fix the March flood damage in Citizens Tower and in the city utilities building. It'll take about six months and be paid for from general funds through a budget amendment. Good to start on that early and paying for all the power upgrades in Lubbock and throughout Texas. It's not just a local and state endeavor. Federal lawmakers have some money in the pipeline to help with Lubbock's new power grid. And KMAX Anna Warnke is in Washington with more on that. Texas Republican Senator John Cornyn introduced the Power On Act to keep the lights on during the next storm. To provide grants to states um, to help weatherize their grid. Uh, and it's would apply to any state who needs that needs that help. The bill would authorize half a billion dollars in federal grant money to help power providers, distributors, and suppliers winterize existing electric equipment. Our electricity grid is part of our critical infrastructure in America, and uh, we need to have that up and running. The bill already has bipartisan support. Cornyn teamed up with Texans in the House, including Democrat Eddie Bernice Johnson and Republicans Kevin Brady and Michael Burgess. Under their bill, the Department of Energy would be tasked with coming up with recommendations for each state and then provide targeted grants. States would also be expected to match the money. We have to make sure that we have winter, winterization plans and that we have safeguards in place uh, for those you know, 50-year, 100-year storms. Texas Republican Congressman Jody Arrington says because of all the attention at both the state and federal level, he's not concerned for Lubbock to join the rest of the state's power grid. A lot of retooling has happened. I think there's a lot of lessons learned, and it is a much stronger utility system and a much more resilient grid. Senator Cornyn says this is just the first step. He says it's going to take some time to completely weatherize the Texas power grid. But he says after February's winter storm, it's clear that it's important to start that process now. Anna Warnicke, KMAC News. And of this weekend's power grid change is the end of a long process in Lubbock. In fact, when this was first proposed at the state level, Lubbock Representative John Furlo was in one of the committees looking at the pros and cons of that change. And he took five good minutes to talk to us about it with our Russ Wack report. And at that time, where we were getting our power, where Lubbock was getting its power, had a lot larger excess amount of capacity, what they call excess capacity, than the ERCOT system. We also were just coming off a, another freezing situation, but nowhere near the magnitude that this last one was. So, you know, it, it concerned me a little bit in the first place. I think, and, and those things uh, proved out again here recently. So I think the things we need to be concerned with going forward is what is that reliability? And also what is the pricing? Right now, Lubbock enjoys some very good pricing, uh, similar to Amarillo. Going forward, we can look, what is our pricing in relation to, say, Amarillo? And do we have that reliability? Also, the way ERCOT works is it's a free market, whereas we're in a regulated market right now. So we have this stability of pricing. Going forward, hedging contracts need to be put in place to ensure that that price that we pay stays constant. And, and so there's a lot of issues going on that uh, uh, we need to be concerned with. There's also some positives, right? I mean, you're, you are now on this system with the rest of the state, and, and uh, I wonder what the, what the, what the pros are in, in this scenario for, for you and, and for the rest of the Lubbock delegation. Well, I, I think the pros are is we want to have, be able to enjoy what we have now. We want to have the low pricing 
consistent power. That's what we want. When we turn that light switch on, we want power. And we want to be able to afford that bill. And so I think that's what we're looking for, and uh, time will prove that out. What needs to happen now uh, from a legislative standpoint? We talked about it a little bit, but what needs to happen now from a legislative standpoint to, uh, to help get this transition across the finish line, aside from you know, making sure that that when when this switch happens at the start of June, that everything goes fine. Well, well I think the, the switch happening and all that, uh, the connection, uh, the plugging into the ERCOT system, that, that's mechanical, that's outside of the scope of the legislature that's being worked on, I'm assuming, by the city and ERCOT, and, and we see that with the trucks that are up there, the uh, uh, connecting the big power lines, and I have not heard anything to say that's not happening. Uh, what I think needs to happen from our standpoint to help protect that grid to ensure that there is electricity when we turn on that switch, that the power plants are running, that they're getting the fuel that they need to run, uh, is some of the, all we can do from the legislative point is get and pass those bills, turn them into laws uh, on the generation side. Do you have any concerns about a, hundred, a few hundred thousand more people joining the ERCOT grid at this well, time? It, it's a pretty small percentage of ERCOT. ERCOT has, depending on how you measure it, anywhere from 85 to 90 percent of the state's electrical market. So uh, they're, they're a big operation. We come from the uh, Southwest Power Pool, and it has, I believe, 14 states in it, going all the way up from Canada, probably down, uh, you know, into Texas. It, and so that's a wider area. You have uh, more of a geographical area uh, to have problems occur, different things that happen. So, you know, there, there are some uh, concerns there, but I think overall, to answer your question, that small increase that uh, bringing Lubbock on board to ERCOT is not very big, probably less than 1%. Any message for your constituents about this? I'm sure you're getting calls and I'm sure people have questions and have, you know, some concerns, but, but what's your message for the people back home about what's about to happen? Well, I think the main thing is it, it's, it's going to happen. We need to look at what's going to happen down the road as we become able as individuals to participate in that open market and find plans that we want. Uh, I believe that was one thing that was stated, uh, you know, what they call going out and buying the, the power you want for the needs you have versus just uh, getting what the city provides. And, and so we'll see if that happens. But I think in general, people will be able to tell whether or not they like it for two reasons. They're using two criteria. That would be when I turn that switch on, does power come on? And is my bill affordable? Those two things, affordability and reliability. Gentlemen, thank you. And straight ahead, what has gotten done at the Capitol as we wind down the legislative session, including good news for Texas Tech, and it's next on Talking Point. Here at RV Pro.